Hey everyone, Forrest here with Rocky Mountain School of Photography and today we are going to do something in Lightroom Classic that is really built around travel photography. If you travel a lot, if you travel frequently and you like to photograph where you go, this is such a cool tool. So what we're gonna talk about today is the map module. And in the map module, I wanna go over a few different things that can really make your life easier for sorting and organizing your images, not by what the content of the images is, but of where you took the photographs. And the cool thing is Lightroom actually integrates really beautifully with Google Maps and allows us to map our images on the map using the map module to make everything work super nicely. So what I wanna do in this video is dive into that process, talk about how it works, talk about some of the ways that we can make it even better. Let's go ahead and dive in. All right, everybody, so here we are in Lightroom Classic, and I'm just in the grid view of the library module right now, but I've got a selection of images here, and I wanna show you guys the map module. Now, before we get into that, we need to get one preference set correctly, or the entire map module is not gonna work the way that mine does. So what I want you guys to do is go up to the edit menu on a PC and go to catalog settings on a Mac it's Lightroom catalog settings but either way get into the catalog settings box go to the metadata tab inside of that box and make sure that you turn on this checkbox right here that says look up city state and country of GPS coordinates to provide address suggestions basically that means when we teach a photo where it was shot we basically say hey photo you were taken here it will actually cross-reference cross that and learn the city, state, and country of where that location is. It connects GPS coordinates with an actual address, which is really cool. So we're gonna go ahead and turn that on. We wanna make sure that's activated. So let's go ahead and jump into the map module. I'm gonna click up here to jump into the map and automatically you'll notice that my map pops up and it's actually already got a five over it for five images. And if I click on that, I'll notice that these five drone shots down in the film strip get highlighted. Now, one quick thing, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you make your film strip visible for the map module because uh, map and film strip rely on one another quite heavily. So we can bring that up, but five images have already been tagged and that's because these images were shot with a drone and drones have built-in GPS and sure enough if I zoom in that actually is exactly where I took these photographs so without me having to do any work they're already marked on the map and that's awesome so if you have a GoPro or a uh, smartphone or I mean everyone has a smartphone but if you use it for photography um, or a other DSLR or mirrorless camera that has a built-in GPS you will get your images automatically tagged and that's super sweet now let me show you the opposite side of that I have these five images which were all shot in New York City. Now, they're not tagged automatically. If I zoom out here, uh, we cruise over to New York. If I can find what I'm looking for, there we go, New York. And these were all shot in Manhattan, so let's just go right here. And they were right about Midtown. So, um, right around this area of town. So that, that's awesome. So here's the deal. You'll notice there's no marker here. There's no, uh, hey, you took five images in this area. So we need to manually tag these photographs. So how do we do that? Well, all you have to do is select the images down here in the film strip and get those images selected. And then what we can do is take the selection of five images and drag and drop them onto the map. And you can drag and drop five, you can drag and drop 200 at one time. Now, obviously precise positioning here is not gonna be uh, exact, right? You can see like, I didn't shoot these exactly right there in New York, right? I wasn't on sixth and 52nd, but I was close, right? I was within maybe 10, 20 blocks of this area, and that's close enough for what I'm gonna measure. Now, what's really cool here is as soon as we did this, I want you guys to look up here to the upper right, and you'll notice that it actually put GPS coordinates in for those images, but also a country, a city, a state, and a sub location. So this all got pre-populated when we added GPS coordinates to these images. None of that was there beforehand. If you don't believe me, go scroll back in the video and you'll see all of these fields were empty. So what we're doing here by dragging images onto the map, we're teaching it GPS coordinates, but more than that, we're teaching it an actual location where the photos were taken. Now, why is that cool? Well, that's cool because the city, state, and country, like we talked about in my previous organization video, are searchable. So if you are in the grid view, and let's say that you are actually viewing all of your images, so you're viewing all photographs, right we want to look at everything you'll notice that right now I see 50,759 photos 
Well, if I wanted to find those images from New York, I could just search for Manhattan and those should show up. So just like I showed last video, I'm going to go up here to the text search and I'm going to say any searchable field contains all and all I really should have to type is just the start of Manhattan and it will find those pictures. So think about this. It just searched through 50,759 photos and found the exact five that were shot in Manhattan. On top of that, if you're more of a visual person and you tag all of your images with a location, you can actually plot them out on the map and simply click on a location and it will show you where those photos are. Just to show you guys that in practice, if I go back to my grid view here, I turn off any sort of filtering and I go to all photos, if I go to the map, my map, and it might take it a second to populate because I have a lot of images that are tagged, my map is pretty, uh, it's got a lot going on here, right? Now, I haven't tagged all of my photos, but I have tagged quite a few, and I can see all of these images around the country that I have previously tagged in the map module. So very powerful if you are a travel photographer. If you're a wedding photographer, a portrait photographer, probably not too much, but if you travel around a lot, this can be a super great tool. Now, one last thing I wanna show you guys is just the fact that you can obviously zoom the map down here. You can also use the scroll wheel to zoom. Um, you can also change the map view from like a road map to a satellite map or a hybrid map pretty straightforward. The last thing I want to talk about is if you want to actually go on a hike and link up your hike path with your photos that you shot on that hike. If you have a GPS unit, which all of us do in our phones, you can actually import a track log from your GPS in your phone. All you would need is like a GPS app on your phone. And you could start hiking and make sure that the camera on your phone and the or sorry, the clock on your phone and the clock on your camera were the same. You could record a GPS route on your phone import that into the computer and it would actually auto teach the images that were shot at that same time where they were taken. A Little bit complicated, that's definitely like a pro status feature. The big thing I can say is just manually dragging images onto the map and then automatically getting the ability to search for them. It's hugely powerful. All right, there we are. That's the map module in Lightroom Classic. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button. If you didn't, you know what to do. If you guys have a question, comment, concern, whatever it is, Leave it in the comment section down below. And lastly, hit subscribe down there or up there to stay up to date with future videos. I also wanna say one thing, we are an in-person photo school. We teach classes. So Rocky Mountain School of Photography is not just a YouTube presence, we're actually a school. So if you guys ever wanna take one of our online classes or learn more about our in-person training, you guys can check out a link to our website down in the description. I think we're a pretty cool place. Obviously, I'm pretty biased, but you guys should check it out if you really wanna take your photo education to the next level. Thanks everyone, catch you in the next one, happy shooting.